In this episode, we'll look at setting exposure for log profiles. We'll do that with a demo on the Panasonic GH5 and Vlog. Many of today's cameras have the ability to capture a wide dynamic range with log capture profiles. Dynamic range is a measure of how wide a range of shadow to light a camera can capture. It's usually measured in stops, with each stop being twice the brightness or luminosity of the previous stop. Now, a couple of years ago, when I got Vlog for my Panasonic GH4, I didn't spend a whole lot of time with it, but I went out and did some shooting and I was really disappointed with the results because it seemed like almost all of the footage seemed very, very noisy. But it turns out this is because I was not exposing correctly. And that's kind of the secret with Log, is you really have to learn how to expose it properly, which is a little bit different than you might be used to. I was setting my aperture and ISO to keep from clipping the highlights while I pretty much just ignored what happened to the shadows. If you go by the exposure guide on your camera, whatever form that may take, oftentimes you'll end up with a pretty noisy image. And this is because technically you're underexposing for the log profile. Now I've heard some say that when you expose for V-Log in particular, this is the Panasonic version, you need to overexpose by about a stop. And I think that really in my experience, that's not a bad rule of thumb, but it doesn't hold 100% of the time. What I've learned is that you may need to make some compromises and take into account both your shadows and your highlights using a waveform monitor. Whatever you do, don't just eyeball it just by looking at the image on the screen and saying, yeah, that looks pretty nice. You'll usually miss and usually underexpose because your camera screen is a standard dynamic range screen, but your camera can actually capture more dynamic range than your screen can display when you're using a log profile. So here's a specific example of what I learned with the GH5. I find that if I want to keep the shadows from getting noisy, I need to expose so that they're well above zero on the waveform. You really want the majority of the things in your frame to be between 20 and 80 on the GH5's waveform. Now that'll be different depending on the type of waveform you're looking at. But there's always this temptation to second guess your highlights and whether you've protected them from clipping and losing detail. The latest generation Atomos recorders, in this case the Ninja Inferno, has a tool they call Atom HDR, which helps avoid this second guessing. Now I've been a long time Atomos recorder user, and I'm really excited about this new feature in the latest generation of their recorders. Here, the waveform shows that the GH5 is in fact capturing those highlights, even when the camera's screen leaves you second guessing. And if I move this HDR slider, the Ninja puts its 1500 nit HDR screen to work to show that you have in fact captured those highlights without a lot of clipping. At the same time, you can tell that you've pulled those shadows up enough to avoid all of the noise. And now that we've dialed in the exposure and optimized our highlights and shadows, I notice that the GH5's exposure guide says that we're a full stop overexposed. Now, keep in mind, of course, it differs from case to case and from shot to shot, but uh, you definitely want to take the time here and make sure that you get it dialed in for your particular shot. Here's one example where the camera's exposure guide actually was right on. I notice also that when I dial in the exposure this way, protecting both the highlights and the shadows, the overall color quality of the image is a lot better, even if I do underexpose and then do some color correction and grading. It seems like if you do underexpose, which is kind of the most common mistake, you never can fully recover all of the color quality and the contrast and, and everything exactly like you wanted it. So if you're like me and a little frustrated or confused by log profiles, get out there and practice a little. Start about a stop overexposed, and then fine tune your exposure with a waveform monitor, making sure to keep your shadows a little bit above the bottom of the waveform and the highlights from clipping up at the top. If you can't fit them both in, then you just need to make a decision and compromise and decide which you're more willing to accept, noise in the shadows or clipping in the highlights. So I hope that was helpful for you. Leave any questions you have down below. If you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.